Bo Deccan, one of 2B2G's biggest known bases on the server. From the beginning where Kane saw started construction, up to the point where both the members from Bo Deccan and Blockade Mecha tried to connect the dots of their bases being destroyed. I will be telling you the story of Bo Deccan and how it eventually led up to that moment. The story begins in early 2015. When the base Exodus was griefed, the players Kainzal and Tech Rev built a stash near it. They were leaving to join Asgard 2 and needed a secure place for their valuables. After Asgard 2 and the third incursion, they had plenty of duped items from the infinite blocks that were used during the incursion and stored them in the stash while they ventured out to create a base named Aureus. About two years later when Aureus was griefed, Kainzal went back to the stash to transfer his things from Aureus. Since he no longer had anything to do, he wanted to move everything to Bedrock, so he constructed a staircase and moved all the items down there. Eventually, Kainzal was already set up at that point when the 11.11 dupe went public and had a perfect place to dupe items. This was also the point where he decided to name the base Bodekin. He called it Bodekin because he pulled a name from the books in the Act of Kane series, which is also where he got his name. In one of the books, Kane and a few others were holed up in an old fortress called the Bodekin, fighting off the Black Knife clan which were savages from the wastelands. They survived battle after battle, slowly losing people until they were finally overrun and captured. Kane still thought it was fitting for 2B2T. After that, he started blasting the first chamber with TNT that he duped. The chamber would eventually turn into the center room of Bodekin. Kainzal created a massive tree at the center of Bodekin and created a glass dome above it. The tree was a schematic, but was built three times since the others burnt down. The first tree was almost fully built until it was burnt down. The second tree burnt down when he started making it. He didn't really know why it kept burning down until a player named Legato underscore found out there were pockets of lava under the bedrock, so he drained the pockets of lava and Kainzal created the third tree. Luckily, this tree didn't burn down, and it took him about a week to complete it. Kainzal gradually began to invite members from Aureus, and even new members, on the condition that no one would ever release screenshots or talk about the base publicly because of all the coordinate exploits happening during the time. In total, there were around 16 players at Bodekin. These players were Kainzal, Tech Rev, Legato Underscore, Yellowstone Joe, Killer Capybara, Bammer Beast, XCC2, Big Don 50, Vargar Girl, Parthicus, Negative Entropy, Jack the Ripper, Heyer, Alpha Computer, Exalted Spartan, and Beardler. However, the main builders of Bodekin were Kainzal, Legato Underscore, Killer Capybara, and Bammer Beast. For the construction of Bodekin, it was split into sides. Kainzal built the left side, Legato built the right side, Killer Capybara built the back side, and Bammer Beast built his own area. To make this easier to explain, I will start with the back side. Killer Capybara was in charge of the backside. He joined the Bodekin in April 2017. After being invited by Kainzla, they had been chatting privately for a few months before then. This was Killer Capybara's first group base since Diamond Town back in 2011, with people outside his immediate friend group, so for him, it was exciting. He built a cathedral and a small house. Since he had to drain so much of the water above him, the cathedral was a nightmare to create. So he felt he wasn't constructing it the most effective way and making it harder for himself. It took him a few months to complete the cathedral. Bammer Beast created his own section. The beginning was a secret entrance in the central room. When you stepped on a pressure plate, the wall would open and lead you to another room of doors. To the left was a lava hall that held a library and a beetroot farm. To the right was the house of Bammer Beast. This held most of his belongings. Going forward will lead you to the 3000 block railway. This tunnel was mined out by Bammer Beast and decorated by Kainzal and he found the process very tedious. At the end, it led to Bammer Beast Ocean Monument and the base's double mob grinder. The ocean monument was drained and turned into a house. The double mob grinder held a Sami skeleton spawner. It was built and decorated by Legato. The left side of Bodekin held most of the farms. There were animal pens of sheep, cows, pigs, and horses. There was also a sheep wool farm to shear all of the colors for wool. Beyond that was a big grass room. This was the last room Kainzal was working on. It was built for Yellowstone Joe to have a spot to build his farm. Additional things were built like carpet and rail dupers, coarse fruit farms, and a pig grinder. The right side of Bodekin was the largest section. At the entrance was the ice anchor built by Legato. On the anchor was a sign that had an Imgur link. In the Imgur link was a picture of a boat Legato was working on until a player named I Tristan used an exploit to find player data. Legato had to abandon the boat since I Tristan had his coordinates, so he built a memorial to it. Going forward led to the Compass Rose. Legato built it so that members of Bodekin can make their own plots. 
Many players have plots like Kane's Law, Varga Girl, Killer Capybara, and Negative Entropy. Negative Entropy joined Bodekin when he was finishing up his Western Air Temple, and picked up random players at spawn to show it to them. One day, he found Kane's Law at spawn and took him there. Kane's Law would eventually invite Negative Entropy to Bodekin, and he built his own plot named the Shrek House. Logata built a Space Valkyria Memorial, and a chess garden. The members occasionally had chess tournaments against each other. To the right of the compass rose led to the submarine dock. It was also built by Legado, and was filled with multiple submarines for the base members to choose from. When a base member picked a submarine, they could only choose the color and decorate the interior. The submarine dock also held the banner garden. This garden held multiple group banners from the past and present. He built the expansion of the sub docks since the base was getting more members. Expanding from the submarine docks held the library annex. A space with spiraling water flowing down to the left, and a library to the right. The library held multiple map art throughout the server. Members of the base also added decoration throughout the base. XCC2 decorated the village. Varga Girl built the smaller trees surrounding the center tree. And many members built their own houses. Going forward from the Compass Rose was Beardler's Lava Room. Beardler built it since he had an idea about building an underground mansion. But after the lava area leading up to it was completed, he lost inspiration. Kainsaw wasn't happy when he built it since he thought it looked terrible. He was going to fix it, however, he was never able to. On May 25th, 2018, Bo Deccan was griefed. At the time, no one really knew who griefed it, and multiple other bases were griefed around the same time as well. This now brings us to the Bo Meccan Wish Trials. When Bo Deccan was griefed, Block Game Mecha followed a mere week later. As a result of the incredibly short time frame, skepticism abounded. Although the two griefs fit within the timeline of Jerry 2013's Month of Destruction, nearly no one blamed him for the griefs, although the possibility was joked about extensively. His affiliation with several Block Game Mecha members made this an absurd thought. Before the Block Game Mecha grief, the fall of Bodekin was written off as accidental, as it was less than 8,000 blocks from an axis. However, when Block Game Mecha was leaked on June 1st, 2018, the members of these bases knew that something was up. After the members of Block Game Mecha grieved the remaining parts of the base, they got to work, thinking, and theorizing. Most members of Block Game Mecha suspected it was Beardler, as he was one of the most recent members of Block Game Mecha, and one of the two players who was at both bases, the other being Yellowstone Joe. Beardler had kicked all Block Game Mecha residents from the Builder's Guild several days before the 1st of June for in quotes being griefers. Beardler also took world downloads of both bases mere hours before their leaks. Curiously, all parts of Block Game Mecha that he missed in his world download were also not griefed. In addition, the players found it suspicious that Beardler killed his account to spawn before declaring the base was griefed at both bases. The only difference between the two was that the grief of Block Game Mecha was almost entirely localized within Drafador's extensive museum. Beardler was also the first member of each base to identify the grief, but as none of the evidence was solid, the members of both bases could not say definitely that Beardler was at fault. A player named Joey Coconut made posts on the 2B2T subreddit, identifying Beardler as a potential leaker of Block Game Mecha, alongside another player named Rai Rai Cat, also known as K2Bot. Yellowstone Joe then began to post in broader terms, claiming Beardler as a leaker of both bases. At this point, the posts were largely fact-finding missions with nothing more than circumstantial evidence tying Beardler to the griefs. Yellowstone Joe asked Beardler to provide chat logs from the times of the griefs, but Beardler refused at first, then provided them later with the relevant time slots deleted. Despite this, most of the 2B2C community believed that Beardler was not to blame, as he was an otherwise trusted member of the museum and an active leader of Builder's Haven. Rai Cat's involvement stemmed from an edited world download taken off a base on the museum server. They found a sign claiming that Rai Cat had been there on the 25th of April. The problem with this was that the tunnel he claimed to have used never existed. The chunks were not loaded on his mini-map, and, of course, the signs was not placed on 2 b 2 t at all. As a member of the museum staff, Rai Rai Cat caught a lot of flack for this. Several days later, the evidence against Beardler was mounting. Beardler claimed that his login was compromised because he let Rai Rai Cat borrow his Minecraft account, which had the same login information as his Discord account, supposedly giving Rai Rai Cat access to the base chat and shared alt. This theory was furthered when Rai Rai Cat referenced block game mecha inside jokes that were almost purely brought up in the BGM Discord. A player named AutismBot posted a public apology on Reddit, and many members of block game mecha also publicly apologized. Beardler's name was publicly cleared of the supposed malicious activities, and it was declared that the destruction of block game mecha was the result of an accident. Beardler responded with an apology and promised to be more careful. 
many blockchain mecha members stayed suspicious and continued to dig for information. About a week and a half after the apology, and after the dust of the conspiracy had settled, Alpha Computer and Mecha leader Autism Bot obtained op on the 2B2D Museum through experimentation with MBT data on signs. They invited a longtime Block Game Mecha resident named Mothra as well. While opening chests at the Block Game Mecha World download, Mothra stumbled upon the book of coordinates created by Optopia, which was signed and given to Beerler, which he had brought to Block Game Mecha. The contents of the book were posted on Reddit. The resulting leak caused several of Beerler's stashes to be leaked, as well as Numenor Base, known largely for Crowbar 01's Moak. While looking through the other books left behind by Beerler, Autism Bot noticed a book entitled I'm Gay written by Alpha Computer. He thought this was amusing, and so sent an image to Alpha Computer. Upon informing Alpha Computer that it was found in a chest at Block Game Mecha, Alpha Computer told Autism Bot that the book I'm Gay was in fact written and stored at Bodegan. After this, Alpha Computer contacted Kane's Law and asked if he still had the original, which he did not. Only one copy of the book had been made at Bodekin, yet the book was somehow in the Block Game Mecha World download. Alpha Computer told Kane's Law to log onto the museum server and go to the Block Game Mecha's museum. This turned out to be a game changer. Before Bodekin was griefed, Kane's Law had placed renamed music discs that he found at a 2013 base and stored it in the Bodekin vault. After it was griefed, the music discs were gone. When Kane's Law went into the Block Game Mecha's museum, the renamed music discs from the vault were somehow in the chest there. Since Beerler was the only one who moved accounts between Block Game Mecha and Bodekin, everyone suspected that he was behind the griefs. Later that evening, Beerler was forced into admitting that he had destroyed Bodekin and Block Game Mecha to acquire their collections of rare items and that he lied about his innocence. He had robbed the bases with a player named Odorus, who had subsequently cut Beerler out of the deal completely and kept all the items for himself with the intention of later selling them. On June 14th, AutismBot posted on the subreddits, revealing that Beeler had sent him Jerry2013's IP address as a result of abuse of Beeler's staff position on the museum server. Beeler later revealed that he acquired the information through a player named Magic X, who acquired Jerry2013's IP address through his staff rank and slash op on the museum server. Beeler instructed him to IP ban Jerry2013 for fear of further bases being uncovered and destroyed, after which Magic X sent Beeler Jerry's IP unprompted. Beerler then sent the IP address to Autism Bot on the 26th of May when they had a similar discussion. Having discovered the coordinates of Beerler's base, Purgatory 2, the Block Game Mecha Shortbus Caliphate sprang into action, with the members Alpha Computer, Autism Bot, Mothra, and Xtoff griefing the base the next day. If this wasn't enough, a large YouTuber named FitMC made a video on the museum's reputation, focusing largely on their relationship with Beerler and his activities on the server. Fit claimed the museum had been stealing IP addresses, that the museum had been directly involved with griefing large community bases, and these griefs had been in order to acquire more bases on the museum. The first two were nearly entirely the result of Beerler's activities, while the third was completely unproven. However, Fit did not credit the vast majority of the players involved in the respective bases or the trials themselves. The museum staff were also deceived themselves, but no leeway was given to them in this narrative. The Jerry 2013 IP leak was placed at the wrong place in the chronology. The grief of Purgatory 2 was indeed carried out by former Bodekin and Block Game Mecha members, but others participated in what was officially a short bus caliphate operation. Following these events, Beardler was essentially bullied off the server, with his co-conspirators abandoning him, and nearly all his other bridges burned, as well as his reputation irreversibly tarnished. Beardler has since apologized for his actions on multiple occasions. So, where is Beardler now? Well, I managed to get in contact with him so he can tell his side of the story. This is what he had to say. Back in 2018, Beerler was messing around with the 2B2T Museum staff and Kane's Law. They invited him to Bodekin since he was fun and nice to talk to. He acquainted himself with the members of the base for a bit and then started to work on his part of the base. He had access to about 6 bases at the time, so he, regretfully, started taking from the supply stashes at Bodekin to fuel his other bases without dupe stashes. Eventually, May rolls around and Jerry2013 does his month of destruction, and at the tail end, Beeler decides to join in, seeing as Jared griefed his main base, Oceania. Beeler justified that he could slap his name on Bodekin and get away scot-free without being caught for having stolen from the base on multiple occasions. After the grief, he blamed it on the new player who put a sign by the base earlier, and almost everyone else at the base appeared to buy it until Block Game Mecha fell. 
He regrets what he did, but the damage is already done, and his persona is still hated throughout the 2B2T community. He understands that being shunned is a direct result of his actions, and he has no interest in returning to 2B2T uninvited ever again. Today, both Deccan is somewhat recognizable. Most of the structures are blown up, but there are also some areas that are noticeable. Players have left signs throughout the years, showing respect to this massive base, and to the amount of work and effort they put into it. It's cool to see after all of these years, bases like this are still remembered till this day. Thanks for watching. I would like to thank Kane's Law, Joey Coconut, the 2B2T Wiki, Killer Capybara, Negative Entropy, and Beardler for their information in this video. Leave a like and maybe consider subscribing for more information like this in the future. Anyway guys, stay fast and see you guys next time.